Hi, my name's Andreas. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved the outdoors, spending my days doing adventure sports and my nights looking at the stars. Space always seemed like the greatest adventure to me. I would often ask myself how do rockets work and how can you land a spaceship on the moon? I decided to study hard and to learn everything I could about science and space exploration. Maybe one day I could work on a space program myself. After finishing my studies in different countries, I applied for a job at the European Space Agency to become an astronaut. They thought I was a good candidate and invited me to participate in a selection process with more than 8,000 other European candidates. We ran through many tests and many interviews. The European Space Agency tested our knowledge and made sure that we could work well together in a team. Eventually, six of us made it to the final, the astronaut class of 2009. I trained hard for many years to be able to fly into space. I spent hundreds of hours inside the Russian spacecraft called Soyuz that would get me to space until I got familiar with every button and every possible emergency. I also learned how to do spacewalks by training in gigantic pools with a model of the space station inside. In case someone gets sick in space, I also practiced how to take samples of blood, how to check someone's heartbeat, and even how to pull out a sore tooth. Robots are a great help to us up in space, but operating them is not easy. I trained how to move a robotic arm using hand controllers almost like in a video game. To learn about alien worlds, I explored extreme places here on Earth. I lived in a research station deep below the surface of the sea and explored pitch black caves searching for hidden life. Like all astronauts, I needed a patch for my space mission. And here the public, and especially children, helped me a lot. They came up with the name Iris, which combines the name of the Greek messenger of the gods and the name of the International Space Station, ISS. After all this hard training, I was finally ready to go to space. The rocket is as tall as a 15-story building, and in less than 10 minutes, I am traveling with my two crewmates at the speed of 7 kilometers per second. It only takes our spacecraft 6 hours to arrive at the International Space Station which orbits the Earth at 400 kilometers above our heads. The station is the only human outpost we have in space. We dock to it, and our crewmates open the door for us. They have been waiting for us, and we can now join them in our new home. We are now weightless in space. In weightlessness, daily life is rather different. We don't need a bed to sleep in, and there is no up or down. We also get to see 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day while we circle the Earth at great speeds. We don't have a shower on board the International Space Station, so we have to take sponge baths and use wet wipes instead of regular showers. And we have to use non-rinse shampoo to wash our hair. We also can't drink as we do on Earth because liquids float around, so either we have to use a straw or we have to catch the bubbles of liquid. Our food is also mostly canned food, or it comes dehydrated. I do science experiments on board the space station so I can help scientists on Earth understand how gravity and radiation in space affect our bones, our muscles, and our body's natural defenses. Technology is my ally in space, and I love gadgets. I can use a tablet with cool 3D graphics and special glasses equipped with cameras to show things to my friends on the ground and scientists in their laboratories. Since I'm weightless in space, I will actually grow in height, maybe as much as 6 or 7 centimeters. To prevent this, I can wear a specially made skin suit, which will prevent me from growing so much and hopefully limit the back pain that I will feel. All young people are invited to join my space adventure. There is a contest for you to make a story of my trip to the International Space Station using Lego bricks. Another challenge for students is to build remote-controlled robots that are capable of moving cargo around inside a model of the space station. University students can build small satellites called CubeSats, no bigger than 10 centimeters on each side, 
that I will hopefully release from the space station and deploy into orbit around the Earth. After 10 intensive days, it is time to leave and come back home. The way back is the world's most extreme roller coaster ride. Some parts of our spacecraft get very, very hot. We are going so fast that our bodies weigh five times more than normal as we go down through the Earth's atmosphere. Luckily, there are parachutes to slow us down before landing. I land, bringing with me scientific samples from space. Mission accomplished. Thank you for following me during my space trip. Keep exploring our universe. There is still so much to discover out there for all of us.